السلام عليكم so a lot today we will talk about scapular fractures a lot of sources we prepare this lecture from we will start by surgical anatomy the scapula is a triangular bone has three processes glenoid process acromial and coracoid regarding the uh, glenoid formed by three part neck fossa surrounded by a rim and there is superior shoulder suspensory complex started by the distal part of the clavicle then coracoid uh, then acromion and the uh, intervening AC joint with ligament and capsule then glenoid then coracoid then CC ligament this is from uh, AB up uh, view from the lateral view again distal clavicle acromion AC in between with its capsule and the ligament glenoid then coracoid then CC ligament if you have this is the common form with uh, fracture uh, glenoid neck with the clavicle if you have double fracture this is a floating shoulder and you have to fix one of the indication for fixation this fracture actually rare why a lot of muscles a lot of bulky muscles surround this bone high mobility oblique orientation and a lot of bone surround which is more susceptible for injury uh, rather than scapula regarding classification you have extra articular classification extra articular fractures and intra articular fracture extra articular glenoid neck body acromial process coracoid process regarding the neck i want you to differentiate between anatomical and surgical neck if the fracture line in the neck extend lateral to coracoid this is the anatomical highly unstable and there is no there is no actual connection between this part and the scapula so you have to fix this fracture is uh, extended from the neck superiorly to medial medial to the coracoid this is called surgical neck if the fracture in the neck extends super doesn't extend superiorly here this is a body fracture so you have to differentiate to differentiate between anatomical surgical and even body near the neck anatomical neck lateral to coracoid the superior part superior border fracture is lateral to coracoid uh, regarding surgical neck is medial to coracoid regarding the body here there is no fracture line extended superiorly this is the zoom for uh, anatomical neck fracture extend lateral to coracoid fracture extend lateral to coracoid and this is uh, the usual uh, fixation for this type of fracture rare very rare type of fracture by one third regarding coracoid and the acromial process if you have the coracoid uh, from the base this is the uh, origin of uh, the base of the coracoid so a large part this is type 1 if the fracture is at the tip like this this is type 1 at the base type 2 is the tip this is usually unstable proximal to the CC ligament and this is at the tip usually stable and no need for uh, fixation there is a radial lucency here between the AC joint on the back there is a radial lucency this is acromial process fracture acromial process is uh, classified either non displaced or displaced or displaced and uh, disrupt the rotator function uh, by narrowing the subacromial space this is the only indication for fixation also this acromial fracture usually occurs after uh, reverse shoulder arthroplasty uh, and you will see later how to fix 
intraarticular fracture, including the rim and the fossa, only 10% classified by Eidenberg classification. Type 1 is a rim fracture either anteriorly and posteriorly. Type 2, 3, 4, where the fracture exit, if it is through the glenoid and exit inferiorly, this is type 2. If exit superiorly, this is type 3. If exit medially, this is type 4. Actually, the workhorse of the approaches for the scapular fracture is the, yes, modified UD. Except the three indications is approached anterior through deltopectoral. Anterior rim, this is one of them, and this very difficult to fracture to reduce. Type 3, Edinburgh, is approached anteriorly, uh, maybe with the help of the superior approach. Anyway, this is Edinburgh 3, difficult fracture, and uh, with uh, anterior rim is the indi uh, two indications of three indication for anterior approach. So one, anterior rim, posterior rim, A and P. Three, uh, two, three, four, exit of the fracture is inferior, exit of the fracture is superior, medially is type four. Any combination is type five, comminuted uh, glenoid is type six. Regarding basogenesis, this uh, high energy trauma, acromial process, uh, just uh, subcutaneous uh, bone, so direct trauma, need direct trauma, or more commonly as a complication of reverse shoulder arthroplasty. Coracoid tip, uh, there is a conjoint tendon, forcible contraction of the conjoint tendon can cause coracoid fracture. Either the rim intraarticular component uh, of the glenoid, either the rim or the fossa, by direct impaction of the head and its direction uh, cause uh, propagation of the fracture according to Edinburgh classification. Natural history, scapular fracture is non-operative uh, management in uh, more than uh, 80%. So either uh, intra-articular or extra-articular if minimally displaced, usually they are minimally displaced, so managed uh, non-operatively in the form of uh, arm sling uh, because malunion well tolerated by well range of motion of the shoulder and non-union is very rare highly vascular area with a lot of muscles surrounding it uh, so uh, low incidence of non-union again natural history is usually non-operative is the rule with good prognosis regarding history and physical examination as usual as usual regarding uh, trauma patient proper history uh, focusing on the mechanism then ALTS protocol, then neurovascular examination. I want to add commonly sign the scapula is a triangular bone. This is a triangular hematoma over the triangular bone. Uh, just for the purpose of the MCQ, uh, associated injuries, scapular fracture associated with all uh, scapular injury associated with about 80 to 90% uh, other injuries, the most common is rift fracture, uh, about 50%. Regarding image, you need true AB, uh, perpendicular to scapular uh, inclination, uh, it's called a uh, grassy uh, view, and true scapular Y, and you need CT. CT three-dimensional is considered the gold standard. Why? To detect lateral border offset or medialization. Through the lateral extent, vertical line from the lateral extent of the proximal fragment 
to the lateral extent of the distal fragment if more than 2 cm you need to fix but beware of the difference between lateral border offset and medialization is it the glenoid part the proximal part is going medially or the lateral border going laterally or both actually if you see here this is the lateral border coming laterally displaced laterally if this is from this line to this line this is lateralization of the lateral border but actually to make the glenoid going medially you have to disrupt to all these connections either the clavicle or coracoid and uh, or its ligaments in between the same uh, uh, coracoacromial ligament AC disruption all of them one of them have to be disrupted to make this actually medialized otherwise lateral border is only lateralized and and you can manage it conservatively so if medialized rotator function uh, 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 is affected so medialization is more serious than lateralization another parameter is the angulation angular parameter if uh, more than 45 angulation this is the this is the scapular y view this is the ct view and this is the scapular y scapular y of x-ray scapular y of the ct perpendicular to the proximal fragment perpendicular to the distal fragment this is a huge angulation affects the function and also if unite in this form and for example he is a driver uh, this will do a skin sore uh, when he sit on the uh, car chair uh, so uh, this one of the indication to correct if more than 45 third indication is glenopolar recently a lot of paper uh, demonstrate its importance glenopolar uh, angle is the angle between the glenoid surface and from the tip to the uh, inferior angle this angle normally uh, 35 to 40 degree if about uh, 15 it affect dramatically rotator cuff function so one another indication of surgery or uh, or the floating shoulder with its commonest form glenoid neck with the clavicle is another indicator in the differential diagnosis you have actually differentiate between extra or intra articular fracture floating shoulder and don't forget scapulothoracic dissociation we will take another session about this topic non-operative management as usual is the rule over 90 percent either extra articular or intra articular usually is minimally displaced so doing well with uh, just arm to sling regarding surgical indication regarding the glenoids there is intra articular part and extra articular part regarding the intra articular part if the rim fracture involve more than uh, one third of the uh, surface area uh, it is one of the indication to be fixed if there is a articular step of about one centimeter it is an uh, in, um, triggering for uh, arthritic changes so it is another indication or any stability of the shoulder itself you uh, the uh, the humeral head isn't uh, stable isn't centrally fitted in the center of the fossa so it is unstable fracture and you need uh, to fix uh, regarding the extra articular component of the uh, neck 40 degree angulation either in the coronal or the sagittal or the more unstable anatomical neck fracture which is lateral to the coracoid process regarding extra articular lateral border offset more than two centimeter angular deformity is uh, more than 45 glenopolar is less than 20 
actually all this indication is uh, there is no single paper uh, uh, doing well regarding what is the proper indication but it's the classic indication in most of the uh, chapters uh, regarding scapular fractures also another indication is floating shoulder superior uh, shoulder suspensory complex disruption regarding the approach as I informed you before modified GUD is the workhorse and there is a classic GUD I will inform you the, uh, the difference there is many approach and minimally invasive approach there is anterior approach and this superior approach this superior approach can be used either in conjugation of anterior or posterior let's go to the uh, modified approach this patient is uh, lying uh, lateral sloping lateral this is the left shoulder so he is on right lateral decubitus position the incision started laterally uh, along the acromion, then the spine of the scapula, then the medial border of the scapula to the inferior angle. Then he developed uh, full uh, thickness uh, flap till reaching the investing layer of the deltoid and rotator. And he is trying to develop the interval of the uh, deltoid the inferior border of the deltoid this inferior border of the deltoid is comprising the posterior and middle fibers of the deltoid once he detects this uh, plan he can retract the deltoid uncovering the infraspinatus below he this is the deltoid after removing the fascia uh, investing fascia incising the investing fascia this is the deltoid from the posterior aspect of the shoulder this is the posterior and middle fibers of the deltoid then he retracting the deltoid upward to uncover the infraspinatus and this is the teres minor the, so he takes the deltoid up then he want to take the infraspinatus up up and laterally don't take this muscle up and laterally too much to avoid injury to suprascapular nerve then teres minor do, don't take it down and medially too much to avoid injury to yes axillary nerve when you take the infraspinatus up and laterally you uncover the glenoid neck and when you open the capsule below you will reach to intraarticular component if you take the uh, teres minor medially like this medially like this you will uncover the lateral border so you can fix the lateral border so this is this movement for the glenoid neck this retraction for the glenoid neck and intraarticular component if you need and this movement for the lateral border of the until reaching the medial if you want this is the modified modified is modified posterior approach uh, through this window infraspinous and teres minor the classic one he go to the medial border directly and derivate a huge osteoporosteal flap of the rotator cuff with overlying uh, uh, latissimus dorsi uh, as a one flap like this he's starting he's starting medially this is the medial border of the cl uh, clavicle and uh, combined with blunt and diacermy districtor to reach uh, the lateral border but the uh, uh, the side effect or withdrawals of uh, this approach that he can't reach the intraarticular component and massive elevation of the rotator cuff in the form of infraspinatus and teres minor he's starting from medial to lateral in the classic one he's starting from lateral to medial many GOD just in the uh, size of the incision this is again from uh, the classic uh, GOD uh, starting from the lateral border of the acromion spine of the acromion to the medial border to the inferior angle there is a fracture doesn't reach to the medial angle so why the whole approach I can do uh, this half of this size of the incision and you will take the infra 
spinata superiorly and laterally to uncover the neck to reduce the neck if you want and when you take the teres minor just medially you will reach this and put the plate on the lateral border of the scapula uh, how I can reduce the fracture of the scapula which is very difficult you can use shans you can use shoulder hook pointed bone to neck actually you use a bunch of them maybe four maybe five you can use lamina spreader and or external fixator especially uh, if it is all the fracture and you have to uh, debride and remove the fibrous tissue this is an example of using shans screw uh, with attached handle to control uh, the reduction and you can uh, use distraction by levering through this bony instrument uh, this is the example of many external fixator which is used in the hand. This is for example this an radius. This is the uh, uh, pelvic reduction clamp. This is uh, uh, bone tenaculum. A lot of them you can uh, you will need bone hook and so on. This is the posterior approach finished. Delto pectoral approach we will take it in details later, but I want you to know its indication. One of them is the anterior rim. This anterior rim is fixed by, for example, two screws like this. Or to reach this silly, very difficult Edinburgh 3 fracture to reduce, you can use delta pectoral approach combined also with the superior approach to reduce this fracture, Edinburgh fracture. And the third one is the coracoid process. Coracoid process fixed by screw if it is large enough or by reattachment as uh, uh, reattachment of the conjoint tendon if involving a small tip if the anterior rim is comminuted like this you can use iliac bone graft regarding superior approach i inform you it is usually used as a conjugation of either posterior or anterior and for both it is just an extensile approach mainly for this silly fracture Edinburgh 3 regarding a chromial process fracture usually either direct trauma or as a complication of reverse shoulder arthroplasty use uh, looked uh, one third the graph uh, uh, one third uh, 3.5 looked uh, blade or uh, tension band wiring technique actually in real life uh, uh, they use combination of both the plate and tension blood because uh, there is a huge uh, force uh, trying to do implant failure this acromion uh, has tendency to uh, be pulled out from this uh, two screws so you have to augment uh, and convert this uh, forces neutralize these forces through the tension band technique complication is usually regarding the uh, neurovascular retraction according to your approach for example i inform you infraspinatus don't in the posterior approach don't retract it more uh, excessively uh, superior laterally you will injury yes suprascapular nerve and also suprascapular nerve can be injured in the superior approach if you retract through the posterior approach the infra uh, the tear is minor uh, medially you will injured uh, axillary nerve regarding delta pectoral you can musculocutaneous around the uh, conjoint tendon medially and uh, the axillary nerve also you can injure and so on so don't retract uh, do a, 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 a excessive retraction of the muscle to avoid injury please answer this question i will put a poll here uh, just to uh, to to choose uh, which which is the correct answer Edinburgh regarding Edinburgh classification horizontal fracture reaching the medial border which is which type thank you so much